Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our session that's going to be talking about the ultimate digitization you will need for your SME. And if you are an SME or an entrepreneur joining us today, you know, please stay tuned for this very exciting session. Before I jump into the questions, I'm going to get the fellow panelists to introduce themselves. Please keep it brief because we have a very short time for this morning. I will start with uh, Dan Roberts, the Global Head of Business Banking for HSBC. Thanks, Jonathan. Great to be here. Uh, Dan Roberts, I'm the Global Head of Business Banking, as you say. So I've got global responsibility for the 1.3 million business customers we have in 18 markets around the world who are typically turning over uh, US dollar 50 million and, and less. Thank you. And then we'll move on to you, Kevin. Thanks, Jonathan. Great to be here. Um, my name is Kevin Fitzgerald, Managing Director for Zero in Asia and based in Singapore. Um, we, we have uh, just over 2.3 million SMEs um, use Zero on a daily basis to understand the financial health of their business and, and get insights into the business. And I, I lead our business for Asia. Thank you. And the man who does not need any introduction, it's well known here in Malaysia, Mark from Google. Mark, hey, thanks, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, name is Mark from from Google, uh, running the uh, business in uh, Malaysia, albeit still from my home at the moment. So this is my, my home setup. Uh, started uh, Google Malaysia started in uh, 2011 uh, with uh, two people, and now we are 60 strong in KL. And I am looking forward to a fruitful discussion this morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Maybe I can just uh, paint a little bit uh, of a background for the audience today. So when we talk about SMEs, it's really the backbone of Southeast Asia. I think over the 10, 11 countries in Southeast Asia, SME it consists of 70 to 90% of establishment of business establishment that are you know, generating 60 to 80% of employment, total employment in the region. So it's a very exciting place. Um, however, that being said, of course, when it comes to technology and innovation, it's always going to be a challenge for these SMEs. In an article published last year by SME Corp, uh, one of the key challenges mentioned was technology and digital transformation and adoption. We don't see enough companies in the SME space that are adopting uh, technology innovation to allow their business to evolve and grow and stay competitive. Uh, however, in the last 12 months, because of the pandemic, uh, digital adoption and technology adoption has become a necessity. Uh, it's actually pushing for a lot of uh, companies to think differently, think outside the box to allow for the business to survive. Hence, you know, this is a very apt discussion this morning, uh, looking into digitization of SMEs and what they need to know to allow their business to survive a very challenging economic scenario today. Uh, but that being said, I actually want to target the first question at Dan. So HSBC is actually a well-known digital leader in the banking space. I think HSBC has introduced in the last 12 to 24 months, many digital banking solutions, including the omni-channel payments. You know, I wanted to check with you then, I mean, what is HSBC doing to help your SME clients to overcome some of this very challenging period, especially with the way business transaction is happening uh, over this pandemic? If possible, if you can highlight a couple of examples, that would be fantastic. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, very happy to give a couple of examples. I mean, to briefly maybe just set the scene. So you're absolutely right. Obviously, um, you know, we'd seen this trend of digital adoption going on over a number of years. Um, and uh, we run an annual review a report called our Navigator Report. And, you know, we've, we can see from that that mainland China, India, Malaysia in particular, but broadly Asia are, you know, very committed to digitization of, uh, of processes and, and they're seeing how their own business models are changing with sort of, di you know, digital technology. And that's just accelerated massively this year with, with COVID. So, you know, we've seen businesses that because like we're doing today, virtual, you know, a virtual conference last year was a, was a physical conference. Um, you know, so many face-to-face -face interactions have obviously been um, removed and, and, the, and so the pandemic's just in, increased that, that pace of, uh, of digitization. 
we, we, we process billions of digital payments per year already. But even then, we've seen you know, really, really material increases, two times, three times, 10 times increases in use of services like uh, trade finance digitally, um, you know, e-signing documents. Um, I'm sure we'll get to it with with uh, the other panelists from uh, from Zero and Google, but we've seen an increased number of businesses who want to integrate their banking needs into other workflows that they're doing, and that's uh, that's a real trend that we're seeing at the moment. So maybe just to give you a couple of quick quick examples, then. So one, um, which will be familiar to uh, hopefully many of the businesses in Malaysia, is a, is a company called KPJ uh, Healthcare. Um, and it's been one of the first healthcare providers in, in Malaysia to offer contactless payments. So basically, um, as, as unfortunately people will know, so one of the things they've been doing is um, is is COVID uh, uh, testing. Um, and the, the, the problem they had was they wanted uh, to design a way to allow um, the people to get their tests safely um, and to reduce waiting times and to be able to do it as contactlessly as possible. Um, so it was all about speeding it up, reduce the waiting lines, reduce the traffic um, and, and get people in and out as safely as possible. So they came to us and we were able to use, um, you know, working with Paynet, um, uh, we, we basically put in, in place within 24 hours um, a, a QR do it now solution that allowed um, payments to be rapidly deployed in May through drive through sites in, in Malaysia. And then that later got expanded. So, you know, just a good example of if you went back I don't know, two, three, four years, um, uh, I don't think many banks would have been able to pull together that kind of capability build in a in a 24 hour period. Um, that's really available. And so what we're seeing is, you know, companies' business needs, we need to be nimble, quick, and be able to execute some of these technology things because, you know, it's important to the business, but frankly, at the moment, it's also these sorts of things are really important to, to society at large. The second one, and actually just listening in the, just before we started the panel to the interview with the um, uh, the, the person before was talking about edutech. And, you know, we've seen obviously a, a real boom in online education. Um, we've got a, a particular Chinese firm we've been working with who have tutors um, in many markets around the world. Um, and their business problem was paying efficiently without kind of high cost per payment into all of these, all of these tutors. Um, and so we worked with them. They had 10,000 tutors around the world um, uh, and they were making uh, you know, monthly payments to them. And it was, a, it was a real headache for them. So we have a product that we've developed called Global Disbursements that allows them to effectively to digitally integrate with us. And then we can handle all of that, that payment into multiple markets. Um, again, if you went back five, seven years, that kind of capability just, just wasn't there. And we can do that efficiently for you know, mid-sized businesses, small businesses that have got these needs. Uh, working with them and you know it, it's it's good for the business and it's good for the the tutors at the other end who are getting paid on time and with you know data rich uh, reconciliation so they're just two examples but there's there's many more but all of this is happening at, at scale and at pace now and i think that's very very interesting i think uh it's important to understand that uh, technology inno innovations and digital solutions have allowed the speed to market, the speed to overcome challenges much better than uh, before. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, digital adoption doesn't come easily to some of the SMEs who are slightly more conventional. So that's always going to be a challenge. Um, this gives me a segue into my next question, which is targeted at Kevin. So um, Kevin, you know, you are a leader in providing um, accounting solutions and you've mentioned early on, you have about 2.3 million SME clients. Obviously, digital accounting or, or e-accounting is actually improving processes, you know, for these SMEs, allowing them to be more efficient, you know, reducing their time and costs uh, and resources required. I mean, what are some of the examples that you can share with us in terms of the zero, the top three functions uh, on your platform that are really creating real value and impact uh, for your customers. And if you could deep dive a little bit into what this impact and value are, that would be fantastic. Yeah, sure. And and, and it's great to be here today to share this information. Um, I, I will say I've, I've been an accountant for a really long time. So I've got an affinity uh, with accounting and, and now cloud accounting. And I have to say accounting hasn't changed in hundreds of years, you know, and it's it's probably not the most important thing that SMEs wake up and think about every day, and I, I don't expect them to. So zero is more about 
um, the impact of digitizing your accounting rather than the digitization of accounting because debits and credits have been around for a long time. And that's a, that's a binary um, process that happens um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an old T account as I, as I was learned. Um, but really when businesses are um, in, integrating zero, what they're recognizing is that the power of the platform is where the impact is. And we purposely built zero to be a system that has open APIs all around the edges, public APIs, and therefore created an ecosystem around it to complement all of the most important things that SMEs really think about and when they, they wake up every day. And if, if you were to draw a circle around an SME, I really feel that they are digitizing the edge of their business. So payments, um, banking, and, and these things are clearly core, but they, they're being digitized maybe because of their customer. And what, we, what we're now seeing is a lot of SMEs are digitizing the inner circle of their business and the, the operations and piece it all together and connecting it. Because when you actually have that richness of data flowing through from the bank accounts and into the zero system, then you can start to learn more and more about the financial health of your business, start to make better decisions. And I call better decisions based on data, but also timeliness. SMEs for so long have been stuck in pulling information that's two or three months old. And, and that's just not good enough anymore for an SME. Like I think they need the help and they need to be able to have fingertip um, data, which we can provide through through zero. So you asked about popular features. Well, I think uh, the most unpopular thing to do is a bank reconciliation for an SME, but the most popular um, feature in zero is actually the bank reconciliation itself. And we, we've in some ways gamified it. Like it's a very important task that ultimately um, means that all of the information going into the general ledger and feeding the rest of the data is in the right places. But the machine learning and the bank rec is, is learning the habits of where the SME is spending or receiving money from. And we are creatures of habit. We tend to buy from the same places and we tend to have a very structured customer base. So we can actually get the machine learning in there and make the bank rec really easy. And what I love, and we, we have um, great API connections with HSBC, is that yesterday's information and transactions in the bank account are in zero this morning when you wake up. And, and SMEs never had that. And I call that enterprise-grade software. Like, that's the stuff that big business used to have. So we're bringing these big tools to small business saying, hey, we can, we can really solve this for you. So we're starting to find that um, and we've had a look at the timings of when people are using the bank rec in zero, and it's happening before 8 a.m. in the mornings. So it's a habit, actually waking up in the morning and we're doing their bank rec. Whereas if you talk to an SME 10 years ago, that was an administrative task that they maybe did on their day off or they wanted somebody else to do. So it's really changed it. So what does that mean? What did they get out of it? Well, they get a much better understanding um, of the real. Um, cash position and financial health of their business because they, they never had it before. So hence the popularity. Um, second most popular feature is, is invoicing and mobile invoicing. You know, you, you, if you go and watch how an SME transacts, they generally provide a service or a product and then maybe they send the invoice when they're ready. Um, what we have given them the facility to do is actually be able to send the invoice straight away turn a quote into an invoice in seconds and send it. Um, and you can send it through multiple forms, email, it could be through WhatsApp, any, any, any mobile device. And you can get that invoice to your customer as quickly as possible. And the impact of that means hopefully you're getting paid quicker as well. <clears throat> There's great tracking uh, tools in the invoice. So we can tell our SMEs if their customer has opened the invoice. So no longer has it been a case of, hey, I've lost this invoice or I never got it actually get a full digital record of, of the transaction um, and you will know that they've actually opened the invoice so you can hopefully chase payment without too much stress. <clears throat> so the, Kevin, if I, if I can just uh, stop you there, basically, you know, Zero allows uh, your customers to be able to, you know, get access, uh, do things real time and get access to data at their fingertips to be able to then make a decision to allow them to, you know, uh, make better business or uh, build better business strategies. 
Yeah, and it's 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 all about removing friction, right? Like, uh, you know, as I said, like the edge of SMEs have kind of digitized. They're very focused on digitizing where the revenue comes from. And that yeah. can be digital payments. And that's where we've seen the, the, the rise of digital payments. But the SMEs that have actually... Maybe hey, Kevin, if I can, if I can just stop you there, you make a very interesting point about uh, you know digitization being one of the key revenue generator. Which I want to just quickly, very quickly, uh, segue to uh, a question for Mark when it comes to digitization, especially digital marketing as a tool to you know increase revenue. Um, and and I I actually read a a report from Nielsen. In the first six months uh, of 2020 in Malaysia, X pen actually has reduced for obvious reason. Uh, but what really surprised me that digital X pen was still hovering around 20, 25 percent, which is not a whole lot uh, when it comes to to uh, digital spend. I mean, Mark, uh, just just to tar target you a little bit here, what do you think are some of these barriers of SMEs uh, jumping on board the digital space, and what is Google doing to actually help them? Hey, thanks, thanks, Jonathan. Um, so, you know, firstly, I cannot comment on the way that the numbers are calculated by, you know, the, the research report because, you know, measuring traditional uh, ad spends versus uh, digital ad spends is um, it's, it's very different. It uh, requires a different uh, level of complexities. But, you know, we have seen businesses, large, small, micro uh, businesses accelerating their, their digital journey and, and even maturity in this past uh, few months right, or this year. So my, my personal anecdote doesn't really, you know, commensurate with, uh, I guess, the, the numbers that uh, you, you just uh, brought up. But having said that, I think it's important to recognize that, um, you know, the digital journey is different for uh, different segments, uh, is different for, for like different businesses. And that ad spends is just one of the many uh, indicators or, or factors, if you will. So I'll, I'll speak more about the uh, broader digital adoption and its, uh, and its barriers. So I have three points. Point number one is, um, I think I think this is most important, is the knowledge or, or the know-how, right? So the desire is there for you know, businesses to go where the consumers are, right? But implementing e-commerce, plugging into marketplaces, setting up like data analytics, um, you know, uh, the, the, the setup, um, investing in digital marketing in an effective manner, you know, requires a completely different, different skill set. And um, so one thing that we're doing at Google is that, um, you know, we first of all uh, recognize this and we are investing heavily in digital upskilling and digital uh, capability, right? So uh, we have a, an umbrella program called uh, Grow with Google uh, or in Malaysia, it's called uh, Mahi Digital Basama Google. And, you know, we partner with the likes of, uh, with the likes of Lazada, AirAsia, Nestle to, to upskill Malaysians um, on, on digital marketing to, to cybersecurity and we, we target Malaysians uh, from, from all walks of life. So that's barrier number one, the knowledge and the know-how. Barrier number two is the perceived added cost to an already streamed business, to an already uh, challenged business, right? And as with all new ways of going about operating a business or driving uh, you know, uh, revenue or incremental revenue, the perception of uh, added cost to a struggling business is always there. Um, and, you know, like I thought, in a way, I feel that um, you know this is uh, far from the truth, because if you look at like a cloud compute, you know it's uh, arguably cheaper and more productive. A pay-per-click advertising model uh, is is a, a pay-as-you-go without the initial setup cost, and then you have this um, you know bunch of a uh, software, HR, accounting as a service model. Uh, an example would be a uh, zero, uh, which is represented here for my uh, by my fellow uh, panelist Kevin. And these SaaS models uh, can be easily adopted by you know small or even large businesses, right? So it, it really takes the first step uh, from the SME owner uh, and the willingness to try new ways to run uh, and, and drive their business. And and last but not least, point number three is um, I think the government has a huge role to play. Uh, the government should lead by example, right? So both both in terms of adoption and support, especially to uh, to the smaller businesses. I can speak for Malaysia, and the government is trying their best. Uh, the stimulus packages are digitally digitally sound, but uh, if you ask all businesses uh, on on their journey to to adopt, um, you know, digital uh, operating tools, right? Uh, certainly, I feel that um, the government can do much more. Thank you for so much for that. I'm looking at also some of the questions coming from the audience, and uh, uh, due to time, I 
unfortunately we can't check all of it i'm going to just pick one and what's really interesting is uh, an anonymous user asked what should be the latest solution from sorry not this one sorry what are the best practices to expand and promote you first then Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think um, uh, I, I hear a lot of people say, you know, we're we're too small to invest in digital. Uh, that I don't I don't agree with that. I think no matter how big or small your business is these days, these um, these capabilities are readily available. Um, you know, Google, frankly, is, has been a game changer in terms of you can access so much information. Um, there are resources. There are government resources. There are resources from providers like banks like HSBC um, and, and many more that you can, you can turn to. So, um, you know, get, do your research. Um, I think if you are not thinking about how you uh, set your business model up in a digital way, you need to think very carefully about the sustainability of that business model over the next few years. So I would just encourage, don't be phased by it. Actually, it can sound complicated sometimes, but actually there's some really simple solutions out there that uh, that are there for the taking. And, um, you know, you can find out about it very easily these days. So just go for it. Yeah, so that, that probably leads me to a follow-up question in the same space. So there are quite a lot of uh, uh, different tools, digital tools that, that SMEs can adopt. I mean, how would an SME go about comparing, say, zero with some of the uh, software as a service accounting platforms that are available in the market because there are just so many of it, Kevin, and this is directed at you. Yeah, it's a great question. And I, I, I think it's really important that SMEs do their due diligence. So the way we approach um, that support and, and given, I guess, uh, the ability to make an independent decision is we work with um, specialists at Ultra Malaysia. So we've about 270 um, partners in Malaysia that can di distribute zero and teach and educate and they've got really good insight into our competitors as well and I think that's where an SME needs to go and engage with them and say hey what's the best for me this is my business today this is where I'd like my business to go and this is what I think my capabilities are today like what I can handle um, and I think you can get some really good independent advice on that in, in the ground all actually all throughout Southeast Asia not just Malaysia and I'm sure they can get this information through your website as well uh, at zero uh, so just Google it, I guess, it would be the best way. And, and then, <laughs> I was going to say that, um, Jonathan, just Google it. <laughs> yeah, so, so of course, we, you know, Google is always a good starting point. But I'm going to just sidetrack a little bit uh, to the last question. I mean, uh, with regards to the type of partnerships that Google is doing uh, with the government and also with the private sector, I mean, you probably have come across different type of pivots and business, new business model that have, that have come uh, out in the last probably six to 12 months. Could you share maybe one or two examples of that, Mark? Yeah, um, well, it's, you know, um, my favorite example is, um, you know, one of our, our very close partner, AirAsia. So AirAsia is, is, is known to be a disruptor in the aviation space. And of late, and it's not because of COVID, uh, Tony will tell you it's not because of COVID, because they started a journey like, um, you know, two, three years ago but they're pivoting into a digitally first uh, company, offering multiple services and transactions uh, and, and fulfillment of the transactions can be done through uh, their new app, right? So AirAsia.com um, through Redbeat Ventures, uh, I think I think it's a, it's a big pivot for an airline and it's uh, something that I'm looking forward to in terms of uh, seeing their success. Awesome, thank you so much for that, Mark. So we are actually coming to the last minute of uh, the session, but I want to still give the panelists a final advice that they can actually give to our SME audience or our startup audience here today. You know, we'll start with you, Kevin, and then proceed with Dan and then Mark. Sure, I think I, I think I would encourage SMEs to recognize the help that's out there. Like, you, you know, you, you're seeing Zero, HSBC and Google come together to help you and, and there's never been a situation like that you know like it's it's now is the best time to actually you know take advantage of those partnerships and and be curious as an sme then i would say the, the winners of the future 
are often born in times like this. It's the tough times. People with good opportunities will um, will thrive and succeed. And even though it is tough, there's some there's some great business opportunities out there. So go for it. Mark. Um, well, my, my statement is, um, you know, to, to SMEs, owners, right, uh, is to, to upskill yourself and, and your employees, uh, future-proof, be relevant, or, yeah, <laughs> disappear. <laughs> so it's not too late to all our SME audience out there. Uh, it's not too late to adopt digital. You have to move fast. There are tools and technology there are readily available to help you. If you happen to struggle, please do reach out to organizations like HSBC, Zero, and Google. They'll be more than happy to help you take your business to the next level and to remain competitive. With that, I would like to thank my fellow panelists. It has been a short but a very sweet session. There are nuggets of uh, learning there, even for me, so I appreciate the panelists being here uh, today to share with you guys. With that, I end this panel session. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.